Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Hines, the Sarge, reporting for duty. Welcome to the uh, Wednesday work show. And uh, big week, of course, with the uh, run for the roses and TikTok. We are just, uh, what, within about 96 hours, 72 hours, right in that uh, red zone for the uh, greatest two minutes of sports. Of course, uh, we'll touch on that. But uh, without further ado, let me welcome in my, uh, my compadre, my running mate the West Coast Racing Manager, Joe Moran. Good afternoon. It's been so long since uh, since I've seen you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been a whole uh, 72 hours probably, but it, it feels much longer. But uh, a productive OBS April trip, and uh, it's nice to be home. Nice to get a little change of pace and, and relax for a little bit. Indeed. And, uh, you know, in the festive moment that we are, I noticed those uh, pretty red roses uh, over your right shoulder. Yep. Like we said, we got the run for the roses on Saturday and I uh, can't wait. You know, it looks to be in my mind, I think it's going to be a very competitive uh, race this year. Obviously, essential quality is is the horse to beat. Uh, but you never know when 20 horses line up in the starting gate together. And it's going to be an exciting one this year, I think. Yeah, it's crazy to think that authentic, you know, winning the Kentucky Derby in 2020. It's been essentially what just an eight month turnaround yeah. and I had an opportunity to, to touch uh, in an interview with both uh, Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert and Hall of Fame writer Johnny V. And, you know, we touched on the, the Derby moment, but the shortest reigning Kentucky Derby winner uh, with Authentic. So it, it really does speak to being in the moment and, and relishing that. Uh, very. I still see in my mind you are chief. Michael Barron, Joe Mishak, uh, in unison, jumping up and down in the grandstand there at uh, Churchill. Pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Absolutely. And um, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see people in the crowd this year. You know, I, I wish I could be there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a it's a new year and hopefully next year we'll be out there in a full crowd. Absolutely. And hey, I want to remind you, folks, on Friday, we're going to welcome back of My Race Horse Live, the new and improved. You know, we've uh, essentially kind of upped our game, if you will, and a big salute going out to the uh, gals there at uh, Grand Slam. Of course, uh, Hannah Bloom, uh, Molly, who do such a wonderful job, and, and Shona. It, it's a crazy week, uh, Kentucky Derby and all that jazz, and I know that many of you out there in my racehorseville, you're excited. Uh, Stuart uh, Eddard, hello, sir, of Albany, New York. Pleasure to have you on this uh, Wednesday. Nick Hines, Joe Moran. Well, Joe, let's just jump right into the swing of things here and and speaking of a moment in time, I want to congratulate uh, the newest graded stake winner on the uh, My Racehorse roster at Tis Magician, Tokyo. Here we come. Yeah, uh, a much-deserved victory. Uh, I mean, we had Gary Mandela a few weeks ago on the show uh, and talking about Tis Magician. And you could tell in the, the tone of his voice the confidence he had uh, in this horse and said, you know, his day was coming soon. And uh, we're going to take a look at this race here. And uh, we couldn't be more proud of him. He's a horse that's gone through so much with us from the trip to Dubai that unfortunately got canceled uh, in the start of COVID uh, in 2020 uh, to, you know, come back, have to kind of get his legs underneath him per se. And uh, now you could arguably say he's in the, the best form of his life. And uh, who knows? I mean, let's hope he can just continue to improve from here. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. Well, indeed, you know, horse that has proven that he can get the elongated distance, which, you know, when you look at, at stakes types, having the ability to take it to, to the extra level. I mean, the point being is that you have a son of Tiz now who was able to get his first ever graded stakes victory. In fact, his first graded stakes placing came in the Tokyo City, a race that uh, was delayed until September of uh, last year. But, you know, once again, we have highlighted uh, Tiz Magician multiple times on our shows. And the one point that I would like to to make here for those that tune into these Wednesday work shows, we try and keep it real, if you will. And the one thing about Tis a Magician, a particular horse that ascended as he marched uh, toward the uh, the Tokyo City, because if you look at his work pattern uh, prior to the big victory here, as you see on April 18th, uh, he earned a 90 buyer speed rating. Is that right, Joe? 95. 95. Wow. Yep. All right. Even higher than I had uh, expected, anticipated there. But so in the interim, coming out of the grade one sanity and handicap in which he encountered traffic trouble, he had four workouts. And we touched each week that uh, we came on 
with those works and, and, and how he had developed into. And as we heard from uh, Gary Mandela, assistant to his uh, father and Hall of Fame trainer, Richard Mandela, a confidence exuded uh, yeah. on the program here. And then, of course, uh, you enter in Flavian Pratt. And we've often talked about the Pratt effect. And it's plainly obvious that he fit this horse like a glove. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I thought one of the biggest keys to the race was Tis a Magician can be headstrong. Uh, and I've always liked to see him on the front end, but I thought, you know, one of the keys to the race was Flavian having such good hands like he does is when Zestful came alongside him and put the pressure on him, Flavian got off the rail, got outside and put the pressure on Zestful. He was always in control. And, and to me, that was the winning move from the get go. Yeah. Tremendous win there. And, uh, you know, for a horse who's had 16 lifetime starts, he's uh, had four victories winning 25% of the time. 10 of which in the exacta with a bankroll now in excess of 280,000. A big uh, congratulations going out to uh, Team Spendthrift, our partner in Tism Magician. Tism Magician out of the Dixie Union Mayor Magic Union, bred by the Woodford Thoroughbreds. And Woodford Thoroughbreds has been very good to us, um, essentially uh, helping lay up our horses there in Florida as well. They, they put on a nice uh, operation. Uh, props going out to uh, John Shannon, of course, and uh, Beth. Bayer. So what would be the next step for uh, Tiz Magician, Joe? Uh, that's a, that is a great question. I, I don't think a spot exactly has been decided. You know, something that I've always talked with Gary Mandela with this horse, you know, previously in the previous months is, you know, could he be a horse that now that he truly proved that he appreciates that route of ground, could you go out of town? You have a race like the Brooklyn that's going a mile and a half. Uh, you could also stay home. You got the gold cup going a mile and a quarter. So there's plenty of options. Uh, the one thing I'll say is I was on site at the track the other day, saw him. You would have never thought he just uh, cruised to victory like that only uh, uh, 10 days ago. Uh, he looked great. His energy was great. His weight was was looking great out of the race. Uh, so ultimately, you know, Hall of Fame trainer Richard Mandelis will lead us in the right direction. We'll get him back on the work tab. Uh, and ultimately, uh, that will dictate where we go. That's interesting. When you look at the, uh, the weight you mentioned, for example, Thorough Manager, they – they offer up the opportunity to see the weights, and he'd actually yeah. put them one pound prior to the uh, Saturday to handicap try. And, you know, he ranges anywhere from 1,165 to, say, 1,175, even at one point, 1,186 pounds. So um, weight is important, um, but fitness and happiness, I think, uh, above all. And I, I can tell you that personally, and, and Joe, you and I hung out quite a bit to their OBS. I think the object of life is to be happy, but also uh, keep it in perspective to kind of keep keep the motor running. Hundred percent. I can't right? agree more. There. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, and okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move on. And yep. uh, once again, Tiz Magician, a chance that he potentially could take his show on the road to New York, and or potentially stay right here in his own backyard with the uh, the Gold Cup, which we'll leave it up to the man. Uh, of course, our Hall of Fame trainer, uh, Richard Mandela. Just want to remind you, Friday, the live show will be back, My Race Horse Live, the new and improved version. Of course, uh, you definitely need to get locked in, tuned in for it. It's an interactive show, as is this show. And, uh, you know, I, I know that, Joe, we obviously wear our hearts on our sleeves here at, at My Race Horse. And as you and I both uh, became aware just a, a few days ago in reference to uh, ancient royalty, I know that there will be a report that goes out. And uh, again, our condolences going out to those shareholders. Um, just a, a, a difficult blow. And, yeah. you know, again, we, we just had an opportunity to pay visit there when uh, we spent some time in Ocala. So, again, our condolences going out to those shareholders. And it's uh, the hardest part of the game. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. It's uh, kind of one of those things that you, you just don't believe was true. Like you said, you know, we saw him on, on Friday. Uh, and then to hear that news the other morning, uh, it's tough. It's the, the hardest part of this game. And anytime you get involved with the racehorse, they, I always say they become a family member to you. And it, it's just like losing, you know, a brother, son or, or, or child. So it's a, it's a tough one. N nothing you ever want to hear. Um, but, you know, the one thing I can say with my racehorse and Tristan Americ, he got the best care. They did everything they possibly could. Uh, and that's the only thing that you could ever ask for. And, uh, you know, it's a bummer. Um, and it's uh, we'll, we'll miss them for sure. Yeah, I you know having been you know involved in the industry since birth, I, I've seen it in all facets, and yeah. it really 
you know, the fact that an ancient royalty hadn't been given that chance, uh, obviously uh, going on to another place uh, in the sky. But again, our condolences going out to uh, each and every one of you out there. And, um, you know, again, our, our hearts are with you on behalf of all of us at uh, My Racehorse. All right, Joe, let's uh, let's turn the page here to a Carpe Venum. Loved her performance last out. And, and you know, she's another horse that, you know, it's kind of a specialty item, right? I mean, here we have Kiss Magician who proves that the marathon distance is of no consequence. She is uh, coming in off of a, a sharp third-place effort in the uh, twice other than optional back on April 4th. She's returned since with two workouts. Uh, what's the latest uh, with Carpe Venum? Yeah, doing great. And, and you know, I'll, I'll say her, to me, uh, we've watched her train for quite some time now. You know, ever since Phil has kind of trained, changed his tactics and, and her way of training in the morning, I feel like she's been so much sharper in the morning. For example, this drill here you're looking at, she's in company. Now, granted, you'll see the exercise rider in the pink cap, you know, definitely was urging her on, but she's responding willingly. To me, that's what you want to see with this horse. She's not a horse that's going to have that change of gears. She's kind of more of that steady one paced horse. Uh, and to me, this was a stellar work. Uh, the horse that she's working with, I believe, is a East Coast shipper uh, that's in the barn for Phil D'Amato. will be running for the first time for him. Uh, but, uh, you know, Carpe, strong work. She galloped out strong. You'll see a, a time difference of, you know, four-fifths of a second difference. But to me, uh, you know, I'm going to give the nod to, to Carpe Venom in this work. Yeah, I would tend to agree. The fact that she showed uh, – you kind of get the impression that maybe she was a target for a Pythagorean in a yeah. sense that – you know, this is a horse coming off a maiden special weight victory at Aqueduct. But for me, I love seeing it because with, with Carpe, I think the idea, the object is trying to, to maintain what speed she has. You know, she is tactical. She's not ultra quick as we've come to find. But, uh, you know, I'm happy to, you know, be representing Jose Valdivia. And he's ridden her in back-to-back -back tries. And he felt that she was able to give him not just one, two, but three different moves in that effort that we saw on April 4th. The biggest difficulty is the timing of the races. Yeah. And we're kind of at the mercy of the condition book. And we're hoping that uh, we can get in a race uh, uh, sooner than later. So as far as the workout, I, I call it a solid B and, and maybe we would be willing to give it a B plus based on that final clocking and how she did it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I thought this was a, a very solid work for her and I'm, I'm gonna go all day long with a B there. So what would be the next step for her, and is there a primary race target? Well, there is the uh, Grade 3 Santa Barbara Stakes, which I believe is on May 8th. Uh, don't quote me, but I'm 99% sure it's May 8th, Saturday. Uh, mile and a half marathon distance race for fillies and mares on the turf. Kind of the ideal spot for her. She does still have that twice other than allowance condition. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we're not going to get that race written consistently at a mile and a quarter or in a mile and a half. So we kind of got to take uh, what's going to be her specialty in distance. This race, we have a feeling it's going to come up on the shorter side field size. So if we could get a six to eight horse field and something that she could fit in, uh, she's proved that she could belong. You know, when she ran in that mile and a half race, a few starts back, uh, the graded stakes race, uh, you know, she's only beaten, you know, I want to say three lengths off the top of my head. Uh, and she had a very game performance. So to me, coming off that last race, she's improving. Arguably, again, you could say she's in maybe the top form of her career, really getting into the groove of things, and maybe going to run a career best here coming up. Well, I think it's kind of kind of cool that uh, Altea, two races removed, coming out of the uh, the Astra, yep. uh, won the uh, stakes at, at Golden Gate this past weekend, the uh, the Golden Poppy. So, uh, congratulations again to uh, to my racehorse with the victory there, Altea uh, Whitey. Uh, Mike McCarthy doing a nice training job. So bottom line, she's kept good company in this particular workout. She worked with a, a recent uh, winner. Uh, Timing-wise, having a race uh, coming back in a shorter window, I think will only benefit her. So that's great news. And by the way, a big run from Social Dilemma, another uh, My Race Horse in partnership with Spendthrift with her effort yesterday at Churchill, coming up just a no shy and that uh, allowance, entry-level allowance for trainer Al Stahl. So Social Dilemma, daughter of Medallia de Oro, knocking on that window and looking to earn that uh, first allowance conditions. Carpe Venom, liking what I'm saying. All right, uh, next up, um, what my producer and our producer 
Hannah Bloom uh, categorized as our well-relaxed, run-happy cult. Popular demand. He certainly is kind of a laid-back character, isn't he, Joe? Yeah, you know, he's a horse that uh, if you go see him in the barn, he's usually relaxing after he gets done with his training. He ain't afraid to take his nap. Uh, assistant trainer Gary Mandela has sent us a few pictures of him napping in the morning. He's uh, quite the character. Uh, here we're going to see his uh, second gate work since coming off the layoff. Uh, if you remember, we highlighted his first gate work where he's not really one to break slow. He breaks out of the gate and then he almost kind of hesitates for a second. He did it again here. It's something that Team Mandela will continue to school with him. I guarantee you'll see him work from the gate once or twice more. But you can see he makes up the ground really quick. Uh, and to me, it, you know, this was a, a very strong work. He's going to be working with a horse that's already worked two five eighths of a mile uh, going into this work. So from a fitness standpoint, Wings of an Angel, who's on the inside, is it's much much further along. But popular demand to the half mile work very strong. Uh, T. Mandela, you know, after each work has been very pleased with how he's progressed. Uh, you know, they did put on those glue on shoes that we touched on uh, a few weeks ago after his first gate work. Uh, and he's had no hiccups since. So, you know, fingers crossed we continue going and, and uh, we're not too far away from the races with this guy. So let me ask you a quick question. I'm, I'm trying to get into the mind of a trainer. And we've yeah. got a horse who's relatively laid back here. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm noting this horse is not wearing blinkers. Is that something that uh, has come up in conversation at all? Yes. Uh, actually, I wish we had it on work, but his previous work, which was not a gate work, he was in blinkers. So they have already toyed around with the idea going from the gate, which was the reason why they took it off. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you see the blinkers come back on at some point. Um, but, uh, you know, that's ultimately going to be Richard. He's not afraid, too, of giving him a start and then adding the blinkers as well. So it's ultimately where he sees him progressing in the next coming weeks, and then that decision will be made. All right, so the work made here, Wings of an Angel, owned by Fox Hill Farm. Uh, this is a $350,000 Keeneland September yearling purchased by Quality Road. Uh, kind of on a, a similar work tab, but I, I think just based on what I'm saying on paper here, Joe, and there he is. Yeah, <laughs> kind of chilling out. I, I love that. Any love horse that, that lies down, he, he lays down, he takes care of himself. Um, I think it's a positive sign, you know, you, sure. you think of, of athletes and, you know, what's interesting, and it was funny, Joe, I know that the other day when we were at Cheddar's uh, having dinner, there was, you know, they have the little pop-ups on the, you know, where you pay for the, the dinner, uh -huh. and they, they talked about uh, cattle and, and horses were the only species that could sleep standing up because they're the only ones in which could lock their knees. Did you know that? I, I did not know that. Well, I, I saw that and I knew that back in the day, but it's just like kind of rung a bell in my head. But, you know, so popular man, he just kind of unlocks those knees and he just chills out, which I, I think is a fantastic. By the way, run happy with another winner uh, yesterday out there at uh, Churchill and a horse by the name of Happy American. So it did take him a few races to kind of find his best ride. But would you agree that with the run happies, uh, kind of seemingly getting the feeling that they just do better with age? Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I know uh, Run Happy did make it as a two-year-old himself, but he was a horse that continuously got better into his three-year-old season. So, uh, so far what we're seeing, I think you're going to see that. And, uh, you know, that $10,000 stud fee might uh, be getting uh, Mattress Mac a lot of business now that the the offspring are, are doing pretty well. Well, speaking of Mattress Mac, uh, you, you heard the craziness about the fact that he's going to wager anywhere from two to $4 million to win on essential quality. And of course he has that tremendous uh, uh, mattress uh, promotion at his store gallery furniture in Houston, Texas. So essentially what he does, he does it with the, what is deemed the Kentucky Derby favorite. He's done it with Super Bowls, uh, World Series in the past. I don't think he's really done it with an NBA championship, but kind of just hedging his bet. So, you know, we'll talk about our Derby selections here uh, toward the end of the show, but Mattress Max certainly not one to uh, pull any punches. No, not at all. And uh, uh, it's exciting. It brings a, a lot of good attention to the game. So it's going to be, I hate to say, I, I might not be uh, having my money where his money's going, but I'll be rooting for him. That's for sure. All right. So as far as uh, popular demand, what's the uh, what's the crystal ball? I mean, where do we stand uh, from a race perspective in that perfect world of imperfection, as I like to call it? <sighs> it's a it's a tough thing for me to say. Uh you know, Team Mandela, they like to get a good foundation under their horses before they run them. You know, uh, they want those horses to be prepared for race day. 
Uh, to this point, he's not had a five eighths of a mile work. This was his second or third half mile, sec, uh, first half mile since having that you know week break uh, after getting his shoes changed. So I still think we're at least probably four works away, uh, and you know maybe five. But uh, that's just me on on an educated guess there. And ultimately, I, I would say once he moves on to the five eighths of a mile drills, how his fitness progresses from there will ultimately decide that. All right, a good answer. You should run for office someday. Thanks. All right, moving, moving on. Uh, popular demand looks great. Uh, solid B in my book, and I, I think the horse he's working at with uh, Wings and Angel certainly one that uh, you want to keep a close watch on for uh, Fox Hill. Um, all right, David Anthes has a question here. Can a horse still run if he is she five years old and hasn't broke its maiden? Ooh, this is a good one. It's tricky for California, right, Joe? Yes, California, I believe it's a new rule now. Once you hit five, if you've not started, you cannot, right? Correct. Uh, yes. And that's but newly implemented. If you have started, uh, you have to go through the whole, whole protocol of getting off of a list, uh, which yeah. is deemed what would be like getting off a of veterinarian's list if you've been out of racing 12 months and beyond. So um, let's put it this way, David. If we've got a horse that is still a maiden at five years of age, then chances are we probably want to think about uh, taking on a different profession because – Ultimately, the mass majority of horses that we see in today's world, in this century, um, in this decade, if you will, things have changed immensely because there was a time maybe 15 years ago that if you saw a four-year-old first time started, you wouldn't be bashful to play. But the reality is in today's light, um, you know, people tend to frown upon horses that, hey, if they can't get it done early, it's much like the Apollo curse. You, you go back to Justify, he was the horse that defied the whole logic and hey, you didn't start as a two-year-old, you're not winning the Derby. Well, the horse that many are looking at uh, this Saturday would be Rock Your World. Is that right? Because he broke right. his – didn't he not break his maiden on June, January 1st? I'm going to have to look it up because I, I don't know if it's January 1st. It might have been right before. Let's see. It was January 1st. I can confirm that. Uh, got a good one. So – all right. So thank you, David. And uh, once again, uh, interactive show here. Feel free to post up your questions. And uh, yeah, Donna, we're just excited. It's Derby week. Um, you know, we're just trying to take in the last swallows of authentic being the uh, Kentucky Derby champ, because after this Saturday, there's going to be a new champion. So um, we're, we're happy. We're just happy to be here. It's a blessing. All right. Let, let's move on to the next horse. And that would be staying in line with the West Coast. Above suspicion, honor code Philly in the uh, Papa Mandela barn. What's the latest here? Wow. Uh, you're going to see her. She's in the middle of this trio, and I've been uh, personally very impressed with this horse. Um, from seeing her at the farm, uh, she's been a horse at, you know, big, scopy Philly that appears that she's going to want to run two turns. Let me tell you, when she's gotten to the track, her her mind's on running, and, and she's all about business. I mean, she could have won a, a half mile here. She was tugging along at the rider, Austin Solis, in the middle of horses here. She gallops up very strong. I think we got to be super excited uh, with how she's progressed so far since coming in. Now, only two-quarter of a mile works, but she's moving right along. Okay, so, uh, Joe, I'm just going to ask you a quick favor because you, you're crackling up on me a little bit here. Uh, maybe pop in and pop out your, your headphones there. And I'm going to have test, you repeat. Test. Okay, go ahead. Test, test. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's still a little crackly. So um, I don't know exactly what that audio technical issue would be. But, uh, producer, I mean, I got this fancy new mic. All right, she's staying to take the headphones out. Can you do that for us? All right. Can you hear me now? Still can hear you. Is it still crackly? Yeah. How about this? So what we might do is is have you come in and come out. Um, I would hate to uh, – we got to carry on with the show here. So uh, let's go ahead and plug you back in. Let's give it a moment here. So above suspicion, uh, this progeny of uh, Honor Code, have to love the uh, the current state that she's in for uh, Papa Mandela. And uh, hopefully we'll get Joe back on board here. She – has uh, had two recorded workouts, including April 18th, April 23rd, out of the marriage exonerated, akin to uh, Sky Diamonds, 
who is a multiple graded stakes winner. In fact, a campaign by Bloom Racing. And I know there's a smile on Hannah somewhere out there, but uh, certainly enough reason to believe that above suspicion, the horse might have some precocity in her favor. Okay, Joe, uh, tell us about this workout. Okay, can you hear me clear? Got you loud and clear, brother. Okay, perfect. Uh, so what I was attempting to say earlier uh, was, you know, and you kind of hit the nail right on the head was, you know, I've been super impressed since she's hit the barn of trainer Richard Mandela, being able to see her at King's Equine with Raul Reyes. She always appeared that she was going to be a later developing two turn type of horse. She has a lot of scope size to her, but since she's come to trainer Richard Mandela's barn, she's had her mind on, uh, on running. She's very forward in her training. And, and as I was saying, you'll see Austin Solis in the middle of the exercise rider, son of uh, Alex Solis. He's got his hands in tight on a, what I'll call a stranglehold. You know, this horse wants to do a lot more than she's being allowed. Uh, from a fitness standpoint, you could probably tell she's uh, a little further along than a quarter mile uh, fit. Uh, this was her second work, so I, you'll see her go on to three eights next week, most likely. Uh, but a strong gallop out, still being very resistant doing this. And uh, I think we got to be very happy. And I would say that, as you mentioned, precocity is definitely, I would say, uh, a good word for her. Yeah, it is interesting because when you consider the the honor code offspring, yeah. uh, they're not generally as good as two year olds as they are as horses that evolve into their their three year old year. But uh, of course, the the sibling, as mentioned, uh, Sky Diamonds, broker maiden in career start number two, this back in two thousand fifteen. She was a daughter of first dude, had a career that saw her earning in excess of six hundred ninety thousand. So she's kind of buzzing right along. And I mentioned the fact that she had had two recorded workouts. So what would be the next step for her? Would she uh, graduate on to a three furlong drill? Yes, that's generally, uh, I don't want to speak for team Mandela and I, I don't have a confirmed answer, but most likely she'll move on to a three eighths of a mile drill next, next week. You'll see a lot of her works come in the early stages in companies. So when these horses come from the farm, even though they do work in company trainer, Richard Mandela likes to put them in different, uh, you know, scenarios, whether it's, three horses, two horses, and really just get them acclimated to a whole, a whole bunch of situations. Uh, so next week, I, I think you'll see her go three eights in company. As far as uh, gate, uh, gate work, have we done much gate work with her as well, far as walkthroughs? Yes, they do walkthroughs. They do schooling quite often. I don't know how often she'll do uh, or how soon she'll have an official gate work, but I don't think it'll be too far away, but I think you'll see her get a couple three eights under her before that actually happens. Uh, and Nick, I see Cash is, is giving you a little shout out here. So love to see that he's tuning in. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen Cash. So I hope you're doing well, Cash. You, you probably wouldn't recognize him. He's 10 foot tall and bulletproof. But Cash has got a big game tonight. Uh, his team uh, will be taking on uh, taking the field here in about an hour. So look love forward it. to that. But uh, love the fact that, you know, we've got fans and family fans, yep. of course, the family. But uh, sh shout out to uh, – Cash, uh, Michelle, of course, my father-in-law, Bruce, uh, who are tuned in. And still can't convince uh, Bruce to invest, but he's close. He's close. Him, yeah, the last thing you want to do is miss out on another opportunity like Authentic because it's just around the corner. But uh, certainly an exciting time with all the two-year-old training sales. There'll be uh, ample opportunity for those folks uh, to get on board. Some nice prospects going forward. Susan Ward, she alluded to the fact that uh, Honor Code, Seattle Slew, top of her list. And it's so true, Susan, because, you know, we look at horses to acquisition at sales. You know, we certainly do our homework and, and we look for, uh, you know, whether it be a Nick, a certain pedigree that worked, but uh, the true rich blood. And I mean, at the recent sale at OBS, seeing Mr. Prospector in just the second, third generation of a horse, uh, you and I had that conversation. Joe, unfortunately, we weren't able to get that particular horse, but um you know, pedigree is, is so ultra important, but as it pertains to this work show and a horse develops. So for me, would you agree that above suspicion is further along than what we'd anticipate at this stage of the game? Uh, one, no doubt, 100%. So let's see, you know, fingers crossed, not a word, it just keeps going that direction. And, uh, you know, look at Honor AP, for example. He was a horse that, you know, did debut, I want to say, end of summer of his two-year-old season. Uh, so it is possible, and and though their pedigrees can you know uh, preclude to them being later developing horses, 
uh, it's all about their mind, their physical ability and how they come along. And uh, some horses can do it, some can't, but she looks like one that definitely can't do it. No, I think that's, that's really the, the, true assessment of, of horsemanship is, is, is allowing the horse to take you there without forcing it. Uh, you know, obviously you having played baseball, uh, I'm, I know you played other sports, but in particular me playing basketball, for example, you, you try not to force it. You know, you kind of, you know, you have to have some sort of a, a strategy, uh, but at the same time, you have to let the horse tell you what their, their next step is going to be. And it's, it's, it really is common sense. Like there's, there's no math to it, but uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the patience applied by uh, Papa Mandela. I mean, he does truly handle these horses as if they are his, and I think that's important. Hands down. Uh, I, I was having a phone call with a, a client uh, not too long ago, and I was uh, talking about that, and for example, and you know, horses like Lane Way, tis a magician, and he is a trainer that you've seen years after years, and I'm sure you saw him uh, way back when before I was even, you know, truly involved in this game where he has such a way and he is so attention detailed and detail orientated uh, that he keeps these horses so sound for so long. He keeps them so sharp. Uh, and, you know, just like humans, I, I'll say like an athlete, when you're in that constant grind and, and practicing every day, eventually you need a break. You need to get that refreshment. And he has such a way to move these horses in and out. He uses uh, Julie Stack, who's done a lot of great work for us, Or even he just gives a horse a quick three, four weeks off where they should jog. They don't miss, lose too much fitness, and they're able to come right back. And, and we don't really miss much time, and it does uh, a world of wonders for the horses. And, and stuff like that goes a long way with these animals. No, absolutely. I uh, Again, a big thank you uh, to Richard Mandela's son, Gary. They've been so interactive in, in providing updates, which – you know, this this is all part of a process, you know, it, it, again, for the experience, for the shareholder, it's important knowing where your investment lies. Where, where, where does your horse stand? And what's my horse doing right now? What's my racehorse up to? I think that's really the bottom line. Amanda, uh, she says, when looking at a horse for the first time in the saddling paddock or on the track, how does a beginner who doesn't know what to look for, for when they're looking at a confirmation for a race? All right, so that's kind of a kind of a loaded question because conf confirmation for me with a horse that's running for the first time, I don't put a whole lot of credence into it. But I will say this, uh, Amanda, if you are looking at a horse that is a bit more upright through the pastern, when you look at the pastern bone down to the foot, my experience is those horses generally will show more speed. Horses that are softer, longer in the pastern, they generally don't have as much speed. So that would maybe be a confirmation element from a fitness standpoint. I think when you're looking at a horse, it's much like condition it would be with a human. You know, if I, Joe, we took on a dual gym membership and we went to a gym and took our shirts off, I think you could probably ascertain who's more fit than the other guy. And a damn sure isn't Joe. Yeah, absolutely. You took the words out of your mouth. <laughs> now, but Joe, what would you like to add to that? So when you look at a first-time starter in the paddock, what do you look for? Yeah, I mean, you want to look for, I mean, to me, I'm going to put in simple terms, that horse that looks the most in shape. You want to see that nice tuck up under the belly. For me, that's a big thing. When you see that tuck up under the belly, you don't want to look like they're overweight because definitely when they're running uh, the, for the first time, you want them to be dead fit. Uh, you know, not all horses are going to be running against all other horses that are running for the first time. So they may be going against horses that have experience. So things like that, they're going to have to have that fitness standpoint. And also, not only from a confirmation standpoint, but a mental attitude. I want to see how they're acting in there, how they're handling uh, the paddock situation. I think that goes a long ways as well. Yeah, I would agree. You know, you generally don't want to play a horse who's washy as a first-time starter, and they just look, you know, discombobulated. I'll tell you, Amanda, the other aspect is equipment. You know, when you see a lot of equipment on a horse first time out, Shatterall, blinkers, bandages, I, I tend to kind of veer from that. So um, just try to keep it simple. You know, when, when you think of, you know, I always kind of chime in with, with the boxing analogy. You know, Mike Tyson, he came into the, the ring virtually black trunks, black shoes, nothing fancy, just go in there and, and do his thing. So John Fredella says, like Nick running a show. Hey, you know what, John, you'd be surprised. But uh, I think at the end of the day, you're probably right. All right. Well, speaking of, of good times and, and all that, um, another uh, exciting 
situation here for us at uh, my racehorse, uh, a recent winner in uh, going to Vegas, uh, winner of the Grade Three Santa Ana back on uh, March 27th. Uh, what's the latest and greatest here, Joe Moran? Yeah, so a horse that you're going to see uh, coming soon, uh, and a horse that's uh, really doing great. She's been uh, a horse a model of consistency, you'd say, and coming off her career best performance. Uh, you know, Umberto Raspoli last time out was able to get her to relax, and she showed an impressive turn of foot. She is, by golden sense, a horse that's really found a home on the turf course. This is a work coming on the turf on April 25th, going a half mile. I was really impressed with this work. I mean, she's all about her business, and, and she's traveling really well uh, on the dirt. Uh, she'd be a horse now that she's in peak form. I'd love to see her one day try the dirt again. But a horse, you know, top form on the turf. Uh, it's going to be interesting where we end up going. I don't want to say there's a race uh, targeted yet, uh, but I, I think you'll see some uh, some top competition races coming her way. Well, she's a uh, a grade one place daughter of Golden Sense, and this uh, the most recent win, her first uh, graded stakes victory. So the timing couldn't be better. And of course, uh, all eyes potentially on the gamely toward the uh, the latter end of May and a race that uh, would certainly give her some more credential. But uh, being trained by uh, Richard Baltus, who certainly has a knack uh, with this uh, daughter of Golden Sense. Uh, thus far, she's had 18 tries, four wins, eight seconds, earnings in excess of 280000 And I would tend to agree with you. Uh, when you look at her, her action, the fact that she was able to come back since the victory, she's worked three times over the main track, a 48-2, a minute and three-fifths, and this being a 47 and a three, which is which is more than more than adequate, uh, and in a partnership with Abadanza Medallion Racing, and um, I think she certainly looks good in this drill. By the way, above suspicion, I give her a, a a strong B in that move. What about you, Joe? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, if it was a little further than a quarter of a mile, I'd probably even go a B plus. But uh, ultra impressed, and uh, you know she's doing everything right. All right, and uh, it, with, with going to Vegas, so so keep an eye on the prize there at MyRacehorse.com for those uh, updates uh, and offerings. Certainly looking forward to what uh, her next step may be. All right, I know that we've got some questions coming in. We've got a, a few minutes here before we uh, sign off, and it's a, a blinker question. So Mara, Mara is a, uh, a weekly viewer. By the way, at some point, I, I would like to have like a, a giveaway uh, for some My Racehorse swag. Yeah. I'm not sure how we're going to do a contest, but I'm thinking that uh, we'll put our heads together with our uh, producer and directing here in Hannah Bloom. What criteria is used to determine when to try blinkers with a horse? Joe, you can answer that. Okay. Um, I'm going to say it's a little bit of a loaded question as well, just like a lot of things in this game. Uh, and there's different variables. Uh, first off, the, most imp the first thing that comes to my mind is if a horse is naturally looking around, right? If a horse is not focused on the task ahead of him, Natural reaction is for an exercise rider to come back. Say, so, you know, I think this horse will benefit from blinkers. You have different cups and variations of blinkers that are going to restrict uh, certain amounts of vision. Uh, you know, full cups that are going to restrict the most vision, quarter cups, half cups, semi cups. Uh, there's all different types, uh, but ultimately the biggest thing is to get their focus there. Now you have a situation like Nick brought up where a horse like Popular Demand, right? He not quite, not wanting to break, but he didn't quite accelerate out of the gate. So what could get him to maybe fire out of the gate? Blinkers could be an option. It could just be as simple as more work from the gate and he'll he'll figure it out, right? Some some horses are going to be uh, longer learners, but but all those type of criteria is going to go into that. And Nick, if you got anything else to add. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, obviously when you think blinkers, focus is number one. Yep. Uh, speed is number two. Yep. Um, and I, I think those are the two primary objectives. Uh, you know, but there are some horses – that uh, tend to get more comfortable with blinkers. And, and, and sometimes, Mara, you'll see what, what are deemed pelling pacifiers. There's actually a screen being placed over the, uh, the horse's eyes, much like what you would see with this microphone here. Um, so it gives the horse the impression of being protected, uh, almost essentially being behind a fence line as far as their vision is concerned. In Australia, for example, they would use those pelling pacifiers for example, when they'd get clods of turf that would come back and hit them in the eyes, essentially would help to break it up. But they, they came to find that with certain horses, once you put those on, 
it calmed, it calmed them. So uh, from time to time, you'll actually see those. In addition to the fact that certain horses, when you put blinkers on, it will settle them. And it's ironic that in, in the quarter horse world, there've been a multitude of horses that actually performed better without blinkers and showed more speed than with blinkers because it essentially dulled their speed. But as a handicapper, I can tell you, Mara, um, two things. Uh, blinkers on, blinkers off with fillies or mares, you can make plenty of money when you see that blinker move. For whatever reason, it seems to work, and even geldings. Not so much with colts, but geldings, blinkers off. I absolutely love that move. And horses generally will show more speed without them once they've had them for a prolonged period. So it's it's a great question. Like you said, it's loaded. I mean, there's so many uh, avenues and variables to that. Yeah. All right, yeah. Joe. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, I thought you brought up a, a very interesting point, how the blinkers, you know, because for me, first thing, and I'd say a lot of people, the first thing you think putting on blinkers is is it's going to get speed, get them to be more on their toes, right? And for you to say, you know, it settles some horses and it makes you really think about some things like when you're out there in the morning, you see horses even jogging with blinkers on and you say the horse is just going out to to jog. Why would the horse have blinkers on, right? right. But some older horses, that's that's their kind of routine. Uh, and their comfort, you know, per se. All right. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to close out this show. And with the, the Kentucky Derby coming up uh, this Saturday, want to remind you the uh, the new improved My Race Horse live airing this Friday at uh, 11 Pacific uh, a.m. 2 p.m. for those out there in the east, 1 Central. And, of course, uh, Kentucky Derby Day comes Saturday. Greatest two minutes in sports. Joe, who's your pick? Uh, I'm going to be a, a hometown boy and I'm going for Rock Your World, uh, a horse I, I think can handle the distance with ease. Uh, and uh, I think he's going to be a, a major factor on Saturday. That's interesting when you consider the fact that he did break his maiden on the uh, the first day of, of January. So we'll try and become the second yeah. to have not raced as a two-year-old uh, since, of course, Apollo and then Justify was able to uh, debunk that in going on to win the Triple Crown. So Rock Your World being ridden by uh, Joel Rosario. It should be an exciting race. I am going with uh, Essential Quality, uh, trying to become the third uh, two-year-old champion crowned unbeaten along the likes of Seattle Slough, Nyquist. Essential Quality, I think, has done pretty much anything everything. He's handled it off track. Uh, he's proven that he can rate. He's proven that he can uh, attend the pace when needed so he can adjust his sales and what a, a tremendous tribute it would be for that uh, Godolphin homebred trained by Brad Cox, who could have a, a huge uh, weekend. Well, I want to thank everyone out there, Judy included, and all of you out there in the uh, land of uh, my racehorse. We certainly appreciate tuning into these work shows. Uh, it wouldn't be the same without you. I can guarantee you that. See money. Ura. Joe, until next time, brother, we'll see you in the winter circle. See you soon.